that easier. So I'm happy to, uh, Janet, to pass to you uh, uh, talking about San Giovese and to introduce Podere Erika, uh, uh, the estate uh, that you have in, uh, uh, in Tuscany. So I would say, what are you doing here? You know, why aren't you in Italy and in, uh, uh, in the farm? Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, Tocca mia. My turn. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, can you hear me? Besides, you, can you hear my phone ringing? Sorry. I don't know. Yes, finally. But can you hear me all right? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, I, it, Christoph asked that I would tell a little story about why and how we happen to be uh, having an estate in Italy. And it, it is just um, a matter that um, 1995, I took our, our first trip to Italy for a vacation, and then we returned every year after that, and I was totally smitten with the country. So um, I wanted to find an estate, um, a property there where I could show, I could share what we learned about Italy and the delights that we found in Italy, and uh, so we found a property that fit the bill. It took years and years of looking at many, over 40 different properties. And um, everything was great about it, except for the wine it was terrible. And I said, well, if we're going to go to the trouble to make wine, let's make a good wine. So we, we, we found a young man, he was only 25 years old at the time, but he was very committed. He had graduated from the University of Florence in Enology and had studied Demeter um, procedures and he took the job and he's very committed to biodynamic farming and in the and as also in the cellar. So we don't add anything extra to the wine and just a little sulfite and some of the wines and some of them um, are without sulfites. Um, and today you're drinking our Lagiandaya, which is um, the Chianti Classico blend. It's 60% Sangiovese or 60 to 70, depending on the year. Sangiovese and the rest is Canaiolo. Both you have the bottle, Daniel? I'm sorry. No, I asked Daniel to show the bottle at the same time. So. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I have. You have it? I also have it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, we're, uh, we're tasting the 2014 vintage, just so you're aware. Oh, okay. Oh, 2014. Okay. Oh, we don't... Sorry, 15. Get, yes, that's it. 2015. Yeah. yeah. So this one is uh, aged in... Um, stainless steel tanks or um, in cement tanks um, for a year and then aged in the bottle. And it's all, it's a very small estate. We only produce a thousand uh, cases of wine a year. And we have six different wines just because Marco gets bored and is always creating something new. But um, this is uh, La Giandaya is our classic, um, as well as Il Picchio, which is 100% uh, Sangiovese and uh, aged in oak barrels. And that's, that's our, our classic line. And yes, and as Christoph said, you know, our, our um, property is available for rental. If any wine lovers would like to bring some friends or family, um, there is, there's five bedrooms and five baths and a pool and a little forest and a bocce ball court and of course the vineyard and and everything that is to offer in the Tuscany region, which is, um, you know, you, you can never have enough time to do it all. 
Uh, which is your favorite? Uh, academic questions. Which is your favorite food when you go there? The first dish you want to eat uh, uh, with uh, with the Sangiovese, Canaiolo, uh, Gandaya, uh, or the Sangiovese? Well, I I like the wild boar pappardelle. That's a that's very um, important in um, Tuscan region where we where we are with the um, wild boars. That they're allowed to hunt them certain times of the year. Um, luckily, we have a fenced property, so they don't come in our property, but um, they are out there everywhere. <laughs> well, th uh, thank you. Thank you for the, the, this oh. presentation, Janet. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. Again, the, the wine is poured by the glass at the battery, so you are, if you're curious, uh, uh, you can order the, the, the selection by the glass. With Team Vintage, I think uh, the wine is beautiful and it uh, uh, I'll let Daniel maybe say a little word about the, the tasting profile of the wine. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Uh, yeah. And cheers, everyone. Thank you. And thank you, Janet, for joining. Uh, quick, yeah, the, the thing that always strikes me about this wine right off the bat is so many Italian wines, especially Sangiovese, are see a lot or a fair amount of oak. Uh, and I find it really interesting that this is a really bright and fresh approach to Sangiovese being only aged in stainless steel, which I think really comes through with the beautiful cherries and raspberries. It's definitely red fruits driven and not too tannic. It's soft, it's approachable, which is so nice, especially for a by the glass option. Um, so yeah, I think this is, you know, a, a really hallmark kind of style for people who want to know what Sangiovese can offer uh, with, the, with, the, with the roses and the red flowers, the red fruits. Uh, and I think you know, perfect with the, the wild boar pappardelle sounds uh, absolutely delicious. I'm getting a little hungry. So, yeah, I think that's an awesome, awesome pairing for that. So, thank you so much. I really okay. appreciate it. Okay, yeah, my, my pleasure. I might hang around a little bit and listen hey, to you. Me too. <laughs> okay. All right. Back to yourself. Hey, Daniel, you want to... You wanna... Uh, yes, uh, uh, then I'll pass it to you back for the, for the next one and the Barbaresco to taste. Uh, I, I would like to jump in on the, the, the food pairing suggestion from, from Janet because it's so important uh, uh, with, with uh, Italian wines. Many of the original Italian wines with Nebbiolo or Sangiovese or, or Canaiolo, even Barbera, has a specific, uh, 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 stunning textural uh, unicity. Uh, there is a part of tannins that is uh, you can find anywhere else in the world, and I believe that the the uh, when you talked about the boar stew and the pasta with the with the sauce, so uh, 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 there is maybe uh, uh, something that you don't you don't catch attention or you don't pay attention when you enjoy it, uh, but uh, uh, in Italy the shape of the pasta will drive the type of sauce you're gonna cook the pasta with. Uh, the important is there is always that uh, uh, fat part of it or the butter with, with, the, uh, with the truffle or the, the cream or the, the, the link of the pasta and the ingredients uh, is gonna be with, with, the, with the, the fat of the sauce, which is magic with these tannins of the wine. The food pairing with Italian wines, uh, uh, stews, meat, sauce, uh, that you can find uh, uh, and pair with, uh, with these wines are absolutely outstanding because it creates a balance of texture that is uh, uh, quasi unique. And I had once an experience with uh, like an osso buco, uh, but in a ravioli, so the meat was inside of the ravioli and there was the, the, the tomato sauce around with the, uh, the onions, the, the carrots and the thing. I mean, it's one of the most uh, juicy and, and, and memory I have of a, uh, of a beautiful wine pairing that works. So Italian wines are, are magic on, uh, uh, on food pairing because of their unique uh, uh, texture and style. And Italian food, uh, I'm, uh, hopefully though I'm, I'm gonna be not uh, hanged out by the French chef, but all the French culture and the French tradition of gastronomy that we enjoy nowadays has been started as well with Catherine de Medicis and the Italian food. Uh, 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 on the on the 18th century, 19th century, all of our culture of food in France comes from Italy and has been masterized. But it comes uh, from Italy. Italy has been the the birthplace 
of the, the recipe, of the complexity of the dishes and the, the enjoyment of uh, food and uh, still has a unique uh, family uh, style of serving. Uh, so in the wines we, we wanted to, uh, uh, to share with you, um, uh, I need to specify another thing that Janet has mentioned is Demeter. So Demeter and the young winemaker uh, uh, that works with, uh, uh, with uh, Janet to the estate at Pau Erika. Demeter is the single German company that certifies uh, uh, European style, the biodynamic culture. So lots of shortcuts for many of our friends that might not know biodynamic precisely. It just means no thing, no additions, no interference with outside elements, no chemicals, no, uh, nothing in the culture of the vine, uh, only natural spray. So what is the result of it? The result you might like it or not, doesn't matter. The, the, the most important part is, is the cultural practice and the winemaking are absolutely pure and without any addition from the outside world. So you can't find any more uh, uh, natural wines. I, I think it was important to, uh, uh, to highlight uh, uh, that part. Uh, so after, uh, after talking about San Giovese, uh, now we're gonna go to uh, visit Barbaresco. So, we said Tuscany. Tuscany was whoop, whoop, right here. Hey, here you go. That was Tuscany, the Chianti area. As you can see, Bulgari, Sassicaia, all the major wine and what became the Super Tuscan were on that part uh, of the sea here. And we are now uh, going with Barbaresco to the Nebbiolo area, which Nebbiolo area is on that part here uh, in the border to, to France, uh, uh, Switzerland. Uh, and Italy is that magic as well of culture that part of Switzerland speaks Italian, part of Southern France here, uh, uh, and, and Savoie with Val d'Aoste, that was the link uh, uh, to the region, uh, speaks as well uh, uh, a specific Patois uh, dialect that was created a mix of Italian and, and French language. So all of this history and, 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 and the time uh, brought us today uh, that uh, the, the Italian world is pretty open. It's probably the Italian ones that are more spread out in all over the world than anywhere else. Italy exports more than a third of its wine. On this export, 50% are just for Germany and the US. There is a community of Italian people in the US. It's absolutely uh, 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 amazing and keep the tradition and, and winemaking. I have to share with you when I started to work in the US in Philadelphia, that there was a grape market. And I'm thinking, what, what, what do people go to, uh, to buy the grapes by, by, I mean, buckets of, of grapes? It's simply because they continue to make one in their bathtub almost, you know, at home. Uh, uh, they do their own cuvee, but the, the tradition of, of Italian family is to produce what they want to consume. And they continue to do their wine uh, uh, on their own in their house. And there is a market. For that in Philadelphia, uh, the Italian market that you can purchase grape to make your own one at home in your garage. So they invented the, the vendor garage before anybody else. Back to the, the, the Piedmont here. Piedmont is foothill. Uh, it's Soto Montana in, in Spain as well on the Pyrenees mountain, but uh, on the Alpine mountains here, the Piedmont area is that location. Uh, here is Veneto, uh, uh, Venecia, Giulia here uh, with the Amarone uh, wines, but uh, Barbaresco uh, uh, and Barolo are on this area, uh, specifically uh, uh, with the climatology that is uh, uh, influenced by the ocean as well, and in a higher altitude elevation uh, wine. So Nebbiolo, uh, probably coming from Nebbia, uh, the, the, the fog that they have over there as well. So the vineyards are above that fog level and produces wines that are with this great Nebbiolo the latest to be harvested. So the Nebbiolo is often harvested in October. So you have a long ripening area for the uh, uh, time frame for the, for the grape. That brings as well again that complexity of flavor profile and specific uh, uh, tannin uh, uh, to the grape. Daniel, I'm, uh, 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 I'm going to pass it to you for the, the Barbaresco. Uh, Pasquale Pelicero, uh, Papa Pasquale uh, uh, is a family uh, uh, tradition of history. He made his first Barbaresco in 1971 uh, bottling. It's now the daughter and uh, her son uh, Simone that runs the uh, estate. It's a very small, I think they produce only a thousand 
uh, same like a couple of thousand cases like you, uh, uh, Janet, on their estate. Daniel, thank you. Tell us about the, the, the wine. Yeah, yeah, sure. No, thank you. Uh, so here, I'll show you the first and foremost, the, the label here, just so everyone, uh, for those of you who are following along, make sure we have the right wine. And this is, this is the 2014 vintage. Sorry about that before. Uh, but to Christoph's point, yeah, the, it's really important when uh, tasting Italian wines to really notice that the tannin and the acid that you really find nowhere else. And typically, a lot of that has to do with the pH of the soil. It's a really low pH, a lot of volcanic activity. Um, and Barbaresco and, and Barolo being side by side to one another, focusing on 100% Nebbiolo varietals, um, uh, wines, I should say, from the varietal. Uh, it's great to see the, the, the really the approachability of, uh, of, the, of the Barbaresco. Um, Typically, it's like Christoph was saying, it's, there's a long hang time to it. Uh, they really want the, the fruit to mature and grow and, and, and come to full ripeness uh, and get the tannins, which is the, the hallmark of the, of the Nebbiolo, really in, in line. And um, this Barbaresco typically being a little softer, only aging for a minimum of two years versus Barolo being three years. Um, so a little more approachable. So this, I think, is a really hallmark classic style of, of, of Barbaresco, having the, the tannin that hit you right in the front of the teeth, that, that drying characteristic, like you would get if you steeped tea too long. Um, it's right there on the, in the front of the teeth, but not, not in an unpleasant way. Uh, it definitely, I think this wine would love to have a little bit of, of food accompanied to it, but it holds up very nicely on its own. You get the great red fruits, the red and black cherry mix. You get the nice kind of uh, dry geranium red flower component. Um, oh, we, oh, we did. I'm still on. Can you hear me? Okay. We can hear you. Oh, okay. It was just Joe who lost it. Great. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, and, and, and uh, with that, you also get this herbaceous earthiness to it, which I think to going back to the, the Sangiovese really shows how well it pairs with so much food and especially in Piemonte where you're getting more into more of a game, uh, rabbit, uh, small game bird, those sorts of cuisine, um, less so than the, the classic Tuscan uh, uh, pastas uh, and sauces. Um, and I think this really shows it, it would really do well with that beautiful, uh, a lighter style of meat, but still some sort of protein that really helps to accentuate this wine. Um, yeah, anything else, uh, Christoph, to add on that one? Uh, we had a question about uh, remember uh, reminding the ne ne Nebbiolo. Nebbiolo was the grape uh, we were discussing for the uh, for the Barbaresco. There was a question popping up on the uh, yeah. on the top of the screen. So, got it. Yes, Nebbiolo. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. For it has to be uh, for Barbaresco. So, uh, no, I mean, things to add to the region is 50%. Uh, um, so what is the wine that is the most, uh, 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 mostly produced in, in, uh, uh, in the Piedmont? I'm not going to think about too much, but Astis Pumante. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Over, hey, 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 hola, hey. hey. Uh, uh, fifty percent of the uh, uh, of the production of all the Piedmont is a sparkling wine, is Asti Spumante. The the production of uh, uh, a Nebbiolo grape through Barbaresco and Barolo are very limited production. They are all family estate. There is something we can notice on the Italian production. If you go to France, Bordeaux, you have the name of the estate, the name of the chateau. Uh, uh, then in Italy, all the wines are family names. They're all, I mean, you can pick whatever, Biondi Santi, uh, I mean, and Brunello, Banfi, uh, 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 Antinori, Lungarotti. The, all of these wines are, or you have the name of the, uh, the, the, um, the Hacienda Agricola, or, or maybe the farm, or what was the, the name there, but they, they all produce wine as the family, and probably 90% of the wines produced in Italy are meant to be uh, enjoyed, but they are meaning enjoyed, that affordable. You will barely pay over 30 euros for a bottle of wine. Then all of these uh, small production wines like uh, 
the Grand Cru from Barolo because there is a, a Cru classification. There is a Cru classification on, on, for the Brunello in, in, in Montalcino. There, there are places that are single vineyards that the wines, believe it or not, are way more expensive than, than Bordeaux. Uh, the Italian wines find a spot in between Bordeaux at 500, 800 per bottle now, uh, if you're lucky to find one from the last vintage. If you want to go to Burgundy and all of the wines for the, the, the Belle Cru, now you have to put 5,000 on a table. So there are uh, wines in Italy that are on a regular basis, over a thousand bucks a bottle to get more of the, 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 the sought after uh, uh, um, wine from Bulgaria, the one from Tuscany, and the, the probably nowadays with the, the, the local grapes uh, interest going, going more track, uh, they now I think the, 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 the consumer doesn't want Chardonnay from Italy. They really want the Vermentino, they, they really want the Trebbiano, they really want the local grapes. And now in the red wine, what makes a success and the price going up on all of these uh, Barolos and, and, and Brunels is the unicity of the wine that you cannot make anywhere else and the specificity of their grapes. Many people have tried to plant Sangiovese in Napa Valley. I haven't heard any Nebbiolo yet, but I haven't seen any amazing successful wine because the varietal has not yet adapted to the climate here and, and the strength of the, uh, of the sun and, and the thing. So Italy is unique and more and more people getting used to the, the, the knowledge of the wine and, and uh, enjoying this lifestyle are now putting the, the price of the market higher on all of these Barolo's wines and, and Barbaresco uh, uh, and the one from, uh, uh, from San Giovese. It was important to, to notice because if you try to find some of the well-known uh, vintage and, and wine in Italy. Now it's, it's uh, amazingly uh, a small circle of people that knows and uh, pay a fortune for, the, uh, for their wine. And uh, uh, to take a classic that we carry on the, uh, on the menu at the Valerie, uh, Giuseppe Quintarelli, uh, in Amaron in Veneto, uh, they reproduce the wine, I mean, uh, handwritten on the label, uh, like Mazzi uh, in Amaron. There is a tradition of it's still a family production. Uh, uh, the, the, the little story about the, the Sangiovese uh, becoming the Brunello di, di Montalcino, it's the, the Biondi Santi family that selected uh, one of the revolution of Sangiovese in their vineyard and developed it. Uh, 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 and it has been named after the Brunello, the, the little brown uh, one, because there is uh, these kind of grapes are turning really easily on sunset style of colors like do the, 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 the Barolos and the, and the Nebbiolo. So all of these uh, uh, little stories define the history and how the, the, the wine has evolved uh, uh, and changed. And uh, it's certainly, again, Italy that you find the wine, the, the wines worldwide, even compared to, to France and other major uh, production uh, uh, areas. Daniel, anything you want to... You, you add to that, no? Uh, no, I, I think you hit on most of it. I, I think the oh. interesting point... Oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, we forgot the recipe for the, for the Barbaresco. So what I would recommend you to try to do, uh, now that we're getting close to a mushroom uh, hunting season, right. as soon, as soon as you find a porcini, a fresh porcini, cut the head off, put some garlic, uh, uh, parsley, uh, breadcrumbs, uh, ville jus or ville stock uh, uh, on top of it. Then you you f you uh, you close it in aluminium foil, and you cook it like that in the oven uh, uh, for for 20 minutes. And this porcini cap with the garlic and the thing and melting in the ville jus uh, with the barbaresco, it's, uh, it's just heaven. I mean, uh, this is uh, uh, <laughs> it's umami. I mean, it's unbelievable. You you have to try that. Eh? Uh, get the mushroom even uh, if you can go grab uh, this porcini mushroom I think at the, the farmers market there is a mushroom store in the, the pier that has a lot of uh, fresh mushroom there go get the porcini there uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, we have another question do producers uh, I have a part of the question only on Barolo and Barbaresco I have it uh, do Barolo and Barbaresco producers combine their lots into single wines these are my favorite wines, but my dad disparages these wines from, for that purpose. Uh, good question. 
Uh, yes, they make single, uh, uh, I'll jump in. Uh, they make single vineyard uh, production wines, depending on the producer. Um, but some of them then blend different parcels together uh, to then make a different cuvee, depending on whichever it is. Uh, this one that uh, in, I can speak specifically of what we're tasting today, uh, this comes from a single crew. Um, again, taking the crew system of, uh, from France and adapting it into Piemonte, into Italy, uh, into the uh, San Giacomo vineyard here uh, in, in Nieve. Uh, so it's a single crew, it's a single bottling, um, and, but that's just this one, other ones that they will, they'll blend them together and produce a different cuvee uh, depending. I think we have another one too. What is the significance of DOCG? Does it generally mean a better wine? You want to take this or me? Oh, you yeah, know, please uh, let, let, let me take this because I have so much fun of this one. Uh, and I have fun uh, of it, making fun of the Italians because with all the due respect, my, my dad was Italian born. So I can, I can uh, make a little joke around on, on, uh, on their classification system. Uh, so uh, 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 probably let's start this way now. The European Union has implemented a system of uh, uh, a classification for the wine that is AOP, Appellation d'Origine Protégée. So protected uh, area of origin. Uh, this system in France has the name of AOC, Appellation d'Origine Controlée, Controlled Area Appellation. And then you have uh, uh, IGP, which is uh, Indicazione Geografica Tipica. So what is the difference between IGP and DOC and DOCG? So DOC is uh, Denominazione di Origina contro, uh, Controllata. It's the same system than AOC in France, meaning that there is a regulation in the village you produce the wine from. There, is, there are rules and regulations, so you can use a specific grape on a specific place and get a specific result from that. IGP, the difference is there is a, a name of a place, but you can do whatever you want in that place. If you grow Chardonnay in Italy, you're gonna name it IGP because there is no AOP, AOC in Italy, DOC, that uh, uh, includes different grapes than Italian grapes. Then, so the cherry on the cake and the fun part for me is, uh, so DOC is Denominazione di Origine Controllata. Then Italian are so, so, <laughs> so strong on what they're doing there that they have to guarantee what is controlled. So DOCG is denominazione di origine controllata garantita. Uh, 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 so I find pretty hilarious that you have to guarantee something controlled, but I think it's uh, the D system uh, 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 in Italy that uh, everything can be done, you know, so now they have uh, to make sure that all the rules are 100% uh, uh, respect the DOCG, so yes. DOCG probably makes a difference between the history, uh, talking about the, the Chianti uh, and the Classico area. Uh, there are places that has been the origin of the growing of the Appalachians. These are the places that are DOCGs uh, uh, to make a difference between DOC and other areas. So uh, strict uh, uh, area of production. So is the wine better to answer your question? I think, the wine is probably more genuine, more authentic. Is it better? Depend of, uh, depend of your taste and your approach on the wine. You might like more uh, IGP with a mix of uh, Cabernet, Merlot and things uh, inside. Uh, if you like really traditional Italian, DOCG, you cannot find a wine more typical than the DOCG of its appellation. Uh, uh, Daniel, uh, uh, how many DOCGs in Italy on this 500 uh, population? Maybe not even uh, 80 or 100? Eh? Uh, Under, yeah, I think 87, I think, if I remember right. correctly. Yeah, 80 around. So it's a very more strict, but it's strict on the sense of it has to carry the legacy of the origin of the production. Let's say it uh, uh, like that. What do you think, Daniel? Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, uh, it's the higher the classification, the more specific it is to the to the rules of the area. And so I think to, you can't uh, quantify it and say that it's necessarily a better wine. It just means that it's fit necessarily into a, uh, a more strict rules in producing the wine. 
So I, I think it's up to the producer. And, and I think actually, I, I just rereading the, uh, the comment before that about the Barolo and Barbaresco, I think I didn't answer that specifically. I think the question was actually, do they combine that, uh, both things in Barolo and Barbaresco? And I think the answer to that is, um, it's under the Lange Nebbiolo, if it's Nebbiolo, uh, it's under the Lange characteristic. So, uh, and it's typically done with the younger vines, things that they're not going to, or if there's, um, if they have too much fruit to produce the wine and they'll declassify it and put it into this. Uh, so you can get some really great Lange Nebbiolos, uh, which are definitely approachable. And a lot of them treat them, a lot of producers treat them in the same way that, uh, that they would their other wines, it's just declassified. So uh, I think that answers this question before this a little better. By the way, yeah, I, I didn't catch it that way. If you do yeah. mix both, like it's like if you do, uh, if you do mix grapes from Carneros and Mendocino, you have to name the wine North Coast. So you go on a larger appellation and yes, if you mix Barbaresco uh, to uh, Barolo wines, you call that Langue, uh, uh, which is close to the Lago di Garda, uh, where, where the, lake, the lake should be uh, right here uh, uh, to the appellation that is a more generic appellation uh, and uh, yes certainly now the the single vineyard uh, denomination on the wine from Barolo or Barbaresco becomes very uh, very important because it's like Burgundy you have identified the place that the varietal on that place gives a, a, a better picture of what it's it's delivering so there is now some, some single vineyards that are more uh, sought after uh, than others. Uh, I would name on the, one of the highest uh, uh, village of, of Barolo, like uh, 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 you mentioned earlier, uh, that uh, um, the, the Vajra, uh, Vajra family uh, is, is, uh, is making a wine. His main wine is Brico, Brico de Levioli. So Brico de Levion is the heel of the violet, and the violet is one of the markers uh, of the Barolo, and it's specific. I mean, it's uh, I think it's a five or six acres uh, single vineyard, but it's one on the top of the hill on the mountain on the highest point of the village, and uh, obviously it's now the most sought after wine compared to the to probably the mix of different uh, terraces uh, and areas. So, but it becomes. Uh, we notice that in Champagne, nowadays Champagne evolves in its production like the Burgundy region. You notice the same evolution now in Italy and the rating of the single vineyards on each and any uh, single appellation. Yeah, and I think just to, to finish that is uh, just a follow-up question here. Um, depending, the, the producers who are making these Barolos and Barbarescos, uh, they're putting, if, even if they declassify it and they put it into the Langier style wine, uh, it's still a, a, a great uh, pedigree of wine. You don't have, it's not just the throwaway that is then bulk wine. It's actually, it's a very well-made, uh, well-structured wine, perhaps not aged quite as long, maybe uh, in, in Barbaresco two years, in Barolo three years, maybe they do it only a year and a half to two years, depending on where they are. Um, there, there's not the same levels going to the DOCG classification uh, that are needed for the, that specific appellation uh, but the wines are still delicious and beautiful. I, I know uh, I'm thinking specifically uh, a producer that we use here at the Battery, uh, currently the Elio Grasso wines. Um, we've had the Dolcetto by the glass and we have their uh, Barolos, by the, or, uh, Barolos on the list. Uh, makes a beautiful Lange Nebbiolo that's just declassified from its vineyards and a mixture of all of them. Mm -hmm. So um, I can say that, you know, it's, it's, it's great pedigree and winemaking that goes into those wines. On to Sicily, Christophe? Uh, yeah, before, uh, one, one last uh, 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 hunting advice for, for, for you guys if you want the, the next uh, amazing wine coming out. So in this Piedmont area with the Nebbiolo grape is a very small appellation that uh, I think two years ago we poured a, a, a wine uh, from that area, which is Gatinara. Yeah. So Gatinara is from Nebbiolo and the winery name of this Gatinara was Neri, yeah. N-E-R-I. So the Neri winery has been purchased by Aldo Conterno. Aldo Conterno, which is one of the most sought after winemaker there. And the wine has already doubled the price, but meaning instead of paying 20 bucks, you're going to pay 40 bucks now. 
I would highly recommend as soon as that wine is gonna come into the market this fall season, to try to find the Gatinara Neri, made now by Aldo Conterno, since the 16 vintage, because it's the release. This is absolutely beautiful wine that is a, a twin brother, twin sister to the Barolos uh, and Barbaresco from the area. So, uh, we, we talked about uh, uh, Piedmont. We went to Tuscany. All right, so the, the third wine of the selection today and to navigate through the Italian uh, uh, wine offer, which by the way, uh, Le Marche and Le Puglia here is the birthplace of the Primitivo and Slovenia and the, 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 the border with Slovenia here is the, the birthplace of the Primitivo that all you guys know well here as the Zinfandel. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there is a little bit of Charbonneau in Napa Valley. So Charbonneau is as well a grape from, uh, uh, from the, the, the eastern part of uh, Italy. So now going down, going down Umbria, Rome, Lazio. Uh, we, uh, okay, so I want, uh, I don't have enough room to show you where is Sicily, but uh, at the end, uh, in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, uh, there is an island around the volcano. Uh, so uh, this volcano name is the Etna. Etna uh, is known in history uh, uh, for many tragedic, uh, I mean tragical uh, reasons, but it's a specific part uh, uh, of Italy on the south and uh, Sicily, I mean, uh, and the Calabrese and uh, all of the story of all of these movies uh, from uh, The Godfather and everything. I mean, that it's, it's down there. Uh, so usually the people from the south of Italy, they don't, like much the people from the north. The people from the north are called the polentoni. The polentoni is the people that eats the polenta. And uh, the, the one down there are the, the, the uh, mandarina or the, the one that uh, eats the citrus uh, fruit. So, but that's part of the, of the history and polenta is, is, uh, is almost in the north considered as the bread of the Italian. You know, it's the corn uh, meal that you long cooked in the uh, uh, in a pan, almost bursting it to have this like nutty flavor. So that's a part of the food culture. Uh, so Sicily, now back to Sicily and the Etna also, uh, the, the very specific part of this uh, region is uh, you're surrounded by the ocean anyway. You are, are in the volcanic soil and there are specific grapes that grows in this volcanic soil that does the, the, the unique, uh, uh, the unique uh, flavor. Uh, to, to the wine, influence strongly the taste of the, of the wine. Uh, so Etna Rosso is coming from the hillside of, uh, 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 of the down uh, hills of the, of the volcano. Uh, there is an amazing female winemaker that we don't carry the wine, and maybe we still have one wine from her, uh, Ariana Occhipinti, if you can find one of her wine. Uh, but uh, the wine we have uh, now uh, uh, at the battery is uh, uh, the Pietrariso, Pietrariso, which is the name of a vineyard. Uh, from Tornatore uh, family uh, and uh, Tornatore estate has been uh, presented as a, uh, one estate that carried uh, the, the Nerello Mascalese uh, grape and to the noble uh, single vineyard now bottling. Uh, thank you, Daniel. I'll, uh, I'll pass it to you in the glass. Describe a little bit the wine. Yeah. So, yeah, we're, with the interesting thing about Ed, the wines from Edna Rosso and Norella Moscolese. I mean, in a blind, I, I hope I never get this in a blind because it's always to me Nebbio or um, uh, Pinot Noir. Uh, Burgund, it's so Burgundian in its approach in so many ways uh, with the beautiful fruit structure and the acidity, uh, the floral components, the, 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 the softness that it, it has. Um, but it, it's all because of these volcanic soils and, and the high altitude. So, these vineyards come are about 700 meters above sea level on uh, volcanic soils on the eastern side of Sicily, on the side of the volcano. Um, and it's just, it's, I, you know, I, I feel like I'm repeating myself with these wines today, but it really is. And, and I think that's the part of the takeaway is a lot of the Italian wines are so red fruit driven and red, uh, red floral, red fruit, red, uh, uh, expression to these wines and, and in a very approachable lovely way uh, so this one I mean you get these and this is a perfect time of year these beautiful ripe raspberries and strawberries a um, little less on the cherry component like you do with the Nebbiolo that's kind of the the differentiation there 
Um, but definitely with the red flowers, not too much tannin. I think there's a big difference for those who are tasting at home. Uh, you notice the difference between the, the really tannic that hits you in the front of the, of the Nebbiolo from, the, from Pimonte um, versus this, which is much softer. It's a, it's a, it's a more gentle approach. Um, so it just kind of, you get more of the flavors mid palate here. It kind of coats the, coats the palate um, and is a really beautiful wine. I love this wine. This is a great wine that uh, for those of you who don't really like white wine, but like to have seafood or lighter fare, I always think Norello Moscalese is a great choice. I, you know, what grows together, goes together kind of thing. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of seafood uh, and fresh fruits, as, as Christoph said, fruits as well, uh, eaten in the, in the South. Um, and I think this wine just pairs perfectly with them. So uh, there was a, a question about the grape. So uh, the major grape in Etna Rosso area is called the Nerello Mascalese. Uh, and uh, the Pietra Risso wine is made with Nerello Mascalese uh, mixed with uh, uh, Catarretto Carignano. Uh, so it's a mix of grapes, but mostly uh, some varieties of uh, uh, Nerello Mascalese. Thank you for the, uh, for the spelling, Daniel. Perfect. Uh, uh, and Catarato uh, Caricante for the for the for the other blend. Uh, the the um, I'm I'm trying to remember the name of that grapes that looks like the the Grenache from Sicily that we had from uh, Ocipinti. Frappato. Uh, Frappato. Oui. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the the uh, which Grenache Italian people claim that comes from Sardinia and and. Uh, areas of Italy to Spain and then came to France after. So Garnacha, uh, it's called Canonau, I think, uh, uh, in down south. Yeah. Uh, Canon, yes, Canon, Canonau, uh, exactly uh, 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 in south of Italy. Uh, yes, Canonau. Uh, and yes, uh, Italy has been the birthplace of all of the culture of the vine growing, the winemaking in all of Europe. Uh, showing everybody that they could use, uh, 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 they could use uh, their local grape to make wine. The, wine, the, the making wine is a, is a culture. It's not taking a grape from some place and put it in a different place. I mean, I'm gonna uh, before answering the question that uh, popped up. I, I just want to say a few words about Super Toscan. Uh, uh, in the 1970, uh, the uh, Antinori family with the Tignanello started to mix a uh, 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 local grape with Cabernet Sauvignon and some of them even doing a 100% Cabernet Sauvignon grape that were a, a hit internationally because uh, uh, that location was allowing the Cabernet Sauvignon to, to become uh, amazingly ripe and deliver uh, 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 an absolutely stunning wine that was called Vino di Tavola. It was not even an IGP at that time because it was refused by anybody in Italy to use a French grape uh, and becoming an, uh, its own appellation there. But they showed the, the, the world that they could do it as well. And I think that brought, it was the, the necessary sickness, because I would call that planting Cabernet Sauvignon all over the world uh, a sickness, you know, it would be awful if all the wine tastes the same. I think it was a necessary step now to enlighten uh, uh, the outstanding wine from Nebbiolo or from San Giovese. Uh, so I think the question was about uh, the, the, what has the last uh, vintages about uh, uh, Nebbiolo. What was the question, Daniel, if you catched it? Uh, there was a question earlier on, on uh, what's the noticeable vintage on uh, 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 probably. Uh, I'm I not sure. Of, uh, I think I've seen, uh, yes, uh, uh, I've seen a question about vintages. Uh, please know that, that Brunello di Montalcino, you need to age the wine. I mean, you cannot find a vintage younger than five years, eh? uh, Daniel. Right. What's, yes. Can you tell us more about uh, working on your exam? Uh, what's the rule of Brunello uh, di Montalcino? <laughs> I mean, the, the most recent vintage, I think now that you might find, is the 14, 14 or 15? Uh, no, 16 uh, was released. Ah. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, no, sorry, 15. You're right. 15. 15 was released. Yeah, 16 will be being released coming up in the fall. So it has to be uh, the, uh, I think it's uh, the first of April in the year and five years prior from the vintage. Uh, so, yeah. For Brunello. The, then, I mean, vintages in Italy, I mean, 71, I believe, is the equivalent to 59 and 61 in Bordeaux. 
highly rated uh, 98 is one uh, you have uh, uh, I think 2012 uh, there was one on the the early uh, tens that was an amazing vintage uh, 10 12 15 were all great well yeah. if you want to if you want to sell your wine 10 12 15 yeah. uh, 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 allow me to say that now there is no bad vintage they're just wine that you can enjoy earlier uh, two cents so yeah. I, I would jump on these because they're less expensive usually uh, but uh, uh, the peak of the tasting of this wine would be in between 12 to 15 years. If you have a Barolo and wants to get the complexity of the cherries, the spices, the leather, uh, the tea, uh, that would be the, 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 the minimal. Yes, 10, 12 Italy on, uh, on uh, uh, worldwide where, yeah. Yes. That's, that's the, 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 the two cents on this one. Um, no, and uh, thinking if I, if I forgot uh, anything on uh, 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 the, the, the style of the growing in Etna is on, on terrace, on steps like, uh, uh, like in Switzerland for the valley or like in the Cotoroti for the, uh, for the terrace. So there are hand-built walls that they have to maintain, which make me think that I have to talk to you about an appellation that is right here. Tini, tini appellation, Cinque Terre. Yeah, yeah Cinque Terre is, is, is uh, as spectacular as uh, uh, the vineyards of Germany in Moselle. I mean, you have steep slopes, uh, uh, a tradition of feast between the, the, the seafood that you can get from the shore and then enjoying the, the, the harvest party, the family style of uh, eating uh, on top. And obviously uh, with the wine, with the Vermentino grown locally and all of the grapes uh, that are pretty amazing uh, uh, around there. So uh, happy to answer any other question. Uh, grazie mille. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I also think, uh, just to chime in really quickly about what you were saying about the Cabernet being planted, uh, it should also be noted that there were producers, uh, many producers, like uh, I'm thinking of uh, Paolo Di Marchi of uh, Isole Olena, which is a very well-known Chianti producer, uh, who wanted to make 100% Sancho Vese, and that for many years wasn't allowed either. You still had to blend. So he declassified his Ceparello Cuvée uh, to be a Veno de Tabula, uh, and it was the highest because it was 100% Sangiovese. So just to add that in. And I think we're, uh, other than knowing the producer, we'd recommend finding great wines. Do you want to take that oh, one? Uh, other than knowing the producer, how would you recommend finding great wines? So um, um, uh, I think the, the best shortcut you can find is talk to somebody. Uh, so, by preference, a sommelier, uh, uh, or, uh, ah, who was my favorite Super Tuscan, eh? Uh, about Liguria, yeah, with the, oh, man, yes, so many things to talk about. Uh, we have to do another, another class. So, uh, uh, K&L has a good uh, assortment of Italian wines. Uh, I would read the uh, reviews. There is an amazing guide in Italy that name is Gambero Rosso. Uh, they rate the, the, the wines with uh, glasses, tre bicchiere, due bicchiere, uh, uh, and, and read or ask, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, you can join the club at the Battery, the Vine Society, and then we'll, uh, we'll give you directions to, uh, uh, to find your favorite wine. Uh, thank you for that. <laughs> uh, yes, I mean, honestly, uh, 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 find a connection with with a human being that can navigate you with the selection. Uh, there are many many talented sommeliers in the city. Uh, some of them works in this retail store. Uh, our former beloved sommelier from the Battery, Patrick, uh, a minor, works at 165 now. They have a collection of Italian wines. Uh, the best Italian wines you could find on retail store is from Cotonia. Uh, uh, and from Matt, the, the wine director for the Queens and the Battery. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, he will probably help you find the, 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 the best wine you can find uh, on store. And there are tools now online uh, that you can go to Wine Searcher, search by region, you have the store, you have many, many access to information that uh, the ultimate, uh, the ultimate uh, decision is yours because you're gonna to have to taste the wine that uh, you judge and, and, and find the, the, the level of wine you wanna you want enjoy the wine with. Eh? Uh, that's that's my, uh, uh, my advice.
Daniel, I'll let you uh, <laughs> no, take I, over now. No, I agree. Uh, I, I think you, you hit on everything. I think it's uh, important just to have the conversation. Of course, I'm always here. If you're at the club, I'm always happy to help and recommend things uh, either here at the, at the Battery or elsewhere as well. As Christophe was saying, there's many... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hey, time to go for dinner. I'm going to cook my, uh, my pasta, okay? Uh, macaroni. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, thank you, everyone. I, I'll say thank you. Uh, this has been a pleasure. I thank hope you, you all enjoyed it. Uh, thank you, thank you. Stay, fine, be, stay safe. Look forward to, to share the, the, next, uh, the next glass one of these days to make for the garden. Yoo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> Cheers, all right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Ciao. thank you. Ciao.